I would I I don't really care what happens in the oil and gas industry in Australia. I'm more concerned about what happens in Africa. And 600 million people with no access to electricity, 900 million with no access to, to clean cooking. They use biomass to cook, most of them women. And then you come to this same continent and tell them, shut off and turn off your oil and gas because we are going to borrow you money and give you renewables, solar and wind, which might just be able, able to only power your house without a fridge. We will, we'll give it to you, we'll give you foreign aid. And you know, if you cannot do for yourself what you expect others to do for you, you're in big problems. And I don't even believe that this aid money is coming because in 2009, you know, I, I, I'm very old, so I, I, I get to remember things. I am, they had the big agreement where they said they were going to provide $100 billion for climate mitigation to emerging countries and and one hundred billion dollars to all of them, to all of Africa, Latin America, Middle East, they didn't pay that money. Oh. So right now it's about one point three trillion dollars. They've spent only twenty five billion dollars to aid agencies. So how how come you gonna to come to a country like Nigeria and Kenya and say give up your oil and gas for people who have never have not even met commitments which they have, they have promised in the in the past so i i seriously um i'm scared for africa i'm scared i was a cop what i saw there and the language and the ability to not even pay attention to african leaders the wow. some of our african leaders um, you know i don't want to get in trouble on your show they were more busy about your yeah, estaca and per diem and hotels they're going to stay in than actually get into the room to negotiate. But it, it, it's, it's something which our generation has to really think what the future is. I'm, I'm really scared for the young people. I'm scared. And the horror story that it's a reality to come for Africa. So, NJ, I think we should start from the worst. How bad do you think it might be? How bad? Let's start from there. Really bad. And I tell you this. By 2050, we'll have a continent with 2 billion people. If you shut down oil and gas, and as they're saying, don't invest in it, you're going to have about 1.4 to 1.5 billion people in the continent without any access to electricity, period. So if you have 1.5 billion Africans in the dark, what does that mean? Jobs go away because Jobs. you cannot run industries without electricity. You manufacturing goes away. Our hope for industrialization goes away. More young people, instead of building something at home, they start crossing the Sahara. And we've heard all the horror stories of people trying to cross the Sahara to yeah. go to Europe. We start getting people crossing the Mediterranean. We start having civil wars because there's going to be austerity and poverty rates will go up. And you're going to start seeing things like gender-based violence going up because of the frustration and everything in our continent. Our governments become very dependent on foreign aid. And then you would see a lot of things, a lot of coup d'etats. We used to think the era of coup d'etats are gone. But most people don't realize this year, 2021, We've had four coup d'etats in Africa. Guinea Conakry, Sudan, Chad, and uh, just one country I can't, I, can't, I can't remember, but we've had four coup d'etats in Africa. Did you mention so Sudan? You, there you was a coup in Sudan, yeah, Sudan two, yeah. Weeks yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah. There was Chad, there was Guinea Conakry, and there was Mali. That's the one Mali, I, was, yeah. I, I just So you've seen young people who are hoping for something better. They want to see a change. So that is going to hit them really hard because our energy crisis is going to be big. But now what do you do with these renewables? All of it is going to be made in Europe, made in Western countries, shipped in Africa, and we're just going to be users. Just like your iPhone. If you don't go into an, an, an Apple store, you're out of luck. So we just go. So imagine them having 2 billion, 2 billion people 
whom they can sell and ship everything to. And it, you know, it's not like I show up to you and I say, hey man, I don't, I can't pay today. You're like, okay, don't worry, you pay me tomorrow. It doesn't work like that. You know, there's a call center, which would be in Germany or in France or in London. Hello, you can't pay, click off. Absolutely. You yeah. Light. yeah. You know, when you call, it's a credit card number. If you say uh, Forex, maybe my debit is not working. Central Bank of Nigeria is not letting Forex. Oh, yeah, that's your problem. You're on your own. And I think that we need to be very, very careful. This is not a joke because I'm 41 years old. You know, I've been there. I've, God has blessed me enough. But we have to be thinking not even about the guys who are 25. The young kids who are 10 and 12 and 15, if we don't shape things right now for them, there is going to be this great dependency and we will not be having these beautiful angels, little black babies that are going to be something really good. And yeah. we will be lamenting in 15 to 20 years, these young girls, I mean, 600 million already now. What happens when we get to 1.5 billion? Yeah, it's very frightening, well, really. Well, because you cannot beg your way to prosperity.